All right, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I melt and pour silver using a ceramic crucible and a handheld torch uh, like this burns a matic here. So those are the key things you're going to need is, again, your ceramic crucible. I'm going to be using two handheld torches. This one's going to be mounted here. It's just going to help speed up the melting process. This is a burns a matic TS-4000. This one, as you can see, is a burns a matic TS-8000. The difference between these is that this one is just a, like a, they call it, I think, a high heat torch. This one is um, like an extra or more powerful high heat torch. It has some adjustments on it. Um, I would recommend at the very least going with this. You can do the whole process with just one of these. Um, it just speeds it up if you have a second torch on your crucible uh, heating up your metal. Um, also, if you are going to be pouring into something like a graphite mold, you'd want a mounted torch like this to heat up your mold um, while you're heating up your silver at the same time is always a great recommendation. You're going to get much more detailed pours by heating up this graphite mold ahead of time. And you can actually just even heat up your silver um, like this and it'll heat up your graphite mold and help heat up your silver at the same time. Um, so highly recommend having something that'll speed up the process like a second mounted torch. However, it is not absolutely necessary. And then also you're going to need whatever you're going to be melting. I'm going to be using this silver shot. Um, you can use, you know, anything from sterling silver, um, to silver rounds or bars or whatever. Um, I would recommend finding somewhere to get silver shot. I happen to buy most of mine from people on Facebook, actually. Um, there's some great groups uh, where you can find better prices than places online like AppMex and JM Bullion and that type of a thing. All right, and for today's purpose, I am going to be pouring into this double-sided mold here. As you guys can see, that is a Star Destroyer. Um, but I'm going to be pouring into this rather than that graphite mold. Um, and you're going to need a few other things that I would recommend. Gloves, eye protection, and some sort of a, a mask. Um, if you guys want to see that in more detail, I have a video that goes over all of the items that you're going to want um, in order to pour silver at home. Uh, so I'll link that video in the description below. I happen to know that the Star Destroyer uh, weighs just over one ounce. It actually weighs about 1.2 ounces. So I'm going to just kind of measure out my silver here. Uh, I want probably close to two ounces is what I want. Um, you want to have a little over pour. Uh, it's just also going to ensure that you're not short on your pour. So I'm going to leave it at about that. We got about 1.97 ounces there. That's Troy ounces, by the way. Uh, that should be sufficient for our pour and have a little over pour, which we will cut off uh, after the process is done. All right, so we're going to take our silver shot. We are going to go ahead and just uh, pour that into our crucible here. Pick up some of those pieces I dropped. Okay, I'm gonna get my protective gear on here uh, and we will go ahead and start melting the silver. All right, so these burns matic torches basically um, just use these uh, MAP Gas Pro tanks. Um, which are by burns matic There's probably some other brands out there. I've never used them. Uh, these are the ones I go with. They have these in like a blue bottle. Um, go with these yellow bottles. Uh, that's important for the burning process with these torches. All right, the other thing is um, you, this one is adjustable. So this TS-8000 is adjustable flame. You really want it maxed out. So if you can if you guys can see this, if I get this turned on, that's pretty much max right there. You don't want it low like this or like this. You want it maxed out, okay? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pause for a second and we'll get started. All right, so I got my mask and my eye protection on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my mounted torch to get that going, speed up the process, and we'll get the silver melted here.
Okay, so I'm gonna time lapse this part of the video here, but so you guys can still see how the melting process works, how I handle the torch. One of the key things with this is that you really wanna, for the most part, keep the torch in roughly the same spot on your silver at all times. Uh, if you're moving it around a lot and spreading it around your silver, it's gonna take longer. The best example I can give is think about using a hair dryer. Uh, if you keep a hair dryer in one spot on your skin or on your scalp, it's gonna burn and it's gonna burn pretty quickly. If you're moving it around, you'll see that it's not really burning very much. It's not gonna really heat up that area a whole lot. The same thing applies when using the torch. All right, very important to continue to melt your silver until it all falls into one combined uh, blob, basically, of silver. Uh, you shouldn't have any pieces that are seen. Uh, you don't really want to see any branches. You, as you can see there, it's kind of all falling into uh, one blob together there. Um, and that's really what you're looking for before you actually pour your silver. Here I'm just continuing to move it around slightly in the crucible, making sure that it is all in a liquid form at this point. I'm also focusing heat on the uh, pour spout of the crucible so that when I do get ready to pour, uh, that area is nice and hot and it's not going to cool down or catch any of the silver as I'm pouring. But at this point, I am ready to pour this silver and you'll see this here in just one second. You do want to keep your torch on your crucible as you're pouring and then make your pour in one nice quick motion uh, as you can see that I did there. Uh, one other thing I want to mention is that as you're getting towards the end of your melting process, if you happen to see uh, you know, a lot of sediment um, or debris or anything like that, on the top layer of your silver, you can use borax and that will actually really help clean up any impurities that you can see floating around in your silver. And I have a good video on that. I will post it in the description below. Okay, so our silver has cooled down here. I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here. We'll go ahead and get these clamps off. We'll take a look at our final product here. And there you guys can see what this looks like before we get it cleaned off. So I'll get this cleaned off I'll guys I'll show you guys kind of the final product here and you can see some of the details that are a little bit difficult to see before it's uh, cleaned up. All right, so here's the final piece here all cleaned up. Um, I used a Dremel to cut off the uh, sprue or overpour. Uh, that's what I'd recommend. You can see I've stamped this with a 999 fine silver stamp. Um, but you can see that the sand casting gets really nice detail on these pieces. Um, I really recommend something like Petrobond if you're going to be using sand casting or uh, Delft clay, which is uh, going to get you even better detail. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I think in one of my next upcoming videos, I am going to do um, a demonstration on how to prepare uh, your mold for sand casting. So keep an eye out for that video. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.